there are various sacrifices and offerings mentioned in the Old Testament. Do they have particular significance? Especially Leviticus 1, Leviticus 3 talks about the burnt offering, meal offering, yeah. and uh, where they're fulfilled in Jesus and what is the relevance for us today? Yes, all these do have their future connotation. Taking, for example, the burnt offering. The significance of the burnt offering, if you look at how the burnt offering was given, Leviticus chapter 1, 15 to 17, chapter 6, 8 to 13, all those places. Even in Exodus chapter 29, you have Numbers 28. When the burnt offering is given, this is supposed to be given every day, 24-7. There will be this offering burning on the altar and uh, the smoke will be going up. And I already mentioned, when the people, whether they are inside their tents or outside of their tents, they can sense that presence of God. They're reminded to the people that God is there in their midst. Inside the temple, it's the smell of the burning flesh. Outside, they could see the smoke. So what that burnt offering meant, signified, is the consecration. A total burning out. Because the other sacrifices, if you look at, you know, a portion will be given to the uh, priest. Uh, but here, no portion will be given to anybody. The whole animal will be burned. So it is signifying that consecration. So in the New Testament, if you look at Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, now Paul is talking about giving ourselves as an offering and he is talking about this burnt offering that is a total consecration that the believer should have to God, to Christ in our Christian life. And therefore, you know, this is about the burnt offering. If you look at the meal offering, this is the only offering that you will find without the blood. A meal offering that see products from the field, it indicates service to God. You know, serving God. And if you look at Jesus, he served his father. You know, as a son of God, until his death. And we are called to serve God. And therefore the meal offering is significant to that aspect of serving God. And peace offering, there are three actually peace offering. There is a thanksgiving offering, there is an OT offering, and there is a free will offering. Thanksgiving offering is, you know, because you are grateful, you bring an offering and give to God. And we do still, you know, by our thankful heart, thanking God, not only just orally, verbally, we praise Him, but by our you know, material things, we actually bring to God the offerings, the thank offering. When you talk about the OT offering, it is because you made a vow before God. The fulfillment of that vow. Bringing that offering and saying, God, I made a vow for a prayer and you fulfill that prayer. I bring in thanksgiving this offering. And there is another one very interesting offering that is a free will offering. Sometimes I jokingly say, it is a chumma offering. What does that mean? You know, because you are so grateful to God. Now, it is not but any particular thing that God had done for you. But rather, you know, you know your God. Your experience with God, your relationship with God, you become so thankful and grateful. You bring this free will, not out of any compulsion, but you want to thank God. And so all of them together is called the peace offering. So the significance of the peace offering is fellowship with God. Communion with God. This is the only offering where you can eat part of the sacrificed animal in the presence of God, in the courtyard. You can eat with your family and friends. It signifies your communion with your own people as well as because you are eating it in the courtyard, in the presence of God, your communion with God. And therefore there is a significant relationship here 
you are identifying having communion and fellowship with god through this peace offering do we have that here yes we have our communion with god not only when you come to church in your personal life every minute of our life because the spirit of god lives in us there is a very close relationship and communion and fellowship that we have with god and therefore the peace offering it is a voluntary offering and it signifies communion and fellowship take for another offering sin offering it is for the sinner we are inherited sin we are born sinners the sin offering is given for the redemption of the sinner that we are and jesus christ atoned for the guilt of our sin then the next one is trespass offering you know the sin offering trespass offering can be distinguished by pointing out sin is for the inherited sin we are born sinners and the trespass offering has to do with the sins we commit as an individual in this world as we live and therefore trespass offering is for the redemption for the sins we commit jesus has atoned for the damage of sin jesus not only atoned for the guilt of our sin atoned for the damage the sin has caused in our life and therefore now when you talk about all these offerings and sacrifices they do have an old testament reference but the significance of these fulfilled in jesus christ has not lost its significance but it is still true to us in our life 